Welcome back to that and Tobago Unboxed, stories from survivors of domestic abuse. Joining us to tell us all about this particular event, we have art psychotherapist Kim Bryan and art therapist Shan McLean. Ladies, welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. So I'm very excited to find out about this art psychotherapy. I'll start with you, Ms. Bryan. What exactly is that? Um, well, art psychotherapy is really a psychological therapy which uses art as its primary medium. Um, so where a lot of talk therapies engage clients through the use of um, verbal dialogue, well, art therapy uses the creative art. Yeah. And what sort of study does it involve to become qualified? Okay. Um, generally, we go through two years at master's level. Um, it's a lot of experiential as well as um, practical training, psychology, art, mm -hmm. and um, clinical work. Wow. And Ms. McLean, how long have you been an art therapist? Um, since 2010. Really? Yeah. And how, how has this journey been for you? Um, it's been, it's very challenging, mm -hmm. but it's very extremely rewarding as well. Great. Now we're talking about this event called Unboxed, and I'm seeing a lot of boxes here. Yes. What is yes. that all about? Well, um, we, Shan and I, we came up with the idea of um, doing an art therapy project based on survivors of domestic abuse. Um, and we tried to figure out what kind of medium we could use which would help frame their experience. We thought boxes were good for that because they could represent so many different things. You know, boxes can represent internal, external, they can contain, you can put things in them, you can take things out of them. So we thought that it would be a good um, way to frame the experience. Mm -hmm. So we chose the box um, for the survivors to use to transform, we call it creative transformation, um, to express their experience of abuse. Now, uh, Ms. McLean, what, who made these? Are these, uh, were these well, the, These by? were part of the, um, what came out of the workshop, because mm -hmm. we did a, a three-day workshop um, where we got um, we got ten participants and they took part in the um, yeah in the workshops over the three days. So they were um, we had a number of different um, different size boxes. So they kind of chose whatever box they thought would represent um, or whatever box they wanted to use to represent their story. And we had a number of different materials. So the boxes kind of evolved over the period of, of three days. Now, I understand that this particular exhibition explores the subject of domestic abuse. Mm -hmm. So the, the people who well, have done this, they were survivors of domestic yes, abuse. Yes, yes, yes. So what were some of the things that you found in those boxes? Um, well, lots of things. So I what think. do they do? They write what? Emotions? What do they do exactly with the boxes? It, well, it was a variety of things. We didn't give much direction in terms of what to do. Mm -hmm. um, we left it up to the participants to decide how they wanted to express their experience. However, I mean, many of the boxes, people did write words. Right. Um, we didn't tell them to write words. I think people wanted to, I guess, express some of the things that they felt. Um, so a lot of people did write words on them. Some people chose images. Um, yeah, it was, like it was a very one. individual. Right. Um, so some people might have wanted to tell like the whole story, some a little part of it, or a particular feeling, um, you know, related to um, their experience. Um, so yeah, and they kind of came up with their own way of expressing that. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Brian, what led to this? Okay, well, we have lots of conversations in the office, and. Um, I think around the time when they had the Life in Leggings movement, we were discussing and we were thinking about it and talking about it. And we we thought it was interesting and we thought it was a good it was good progress. So um, in light of that, we also felt that we could do something as art therapists to help with the process of healing because um, a lot of times people talk about abuse, but there wasn't any talk about intervention, if you know. Right. Me. 
So we thought we can um, educate and help bring to light some of the issues that survivors face through using the art therapy medium. And so originally we wanted to do it around the time of what it was the domestic um, violence yes. awareness. Um, but it kind of evolved into a bit more over time. Mm -hmm. So this particular event, it's a three-day event? No. no. The workshop, workshop was three days. Mm -hmm. And we had our opening um, last week, Tuesday. Okay. Um, so it's going to be running at Medulla Art Gallery for, for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, tonight we have a panel discussion um, on the subject of abuse. So we have like seven people um, with experience in the field. And um, they will answer different questions on the issue. So it's highly interactive. Yes. yes. So survivors of domestic abuse, they are invited to this event? Yes. Yeah, anyone it's in particular? Anyone. It's, open to, it's, open. it's open to the public. Okay. And how do, do you have to register? How does it work? Or just show up? Yeah, no? just show just up. Show it up. starts at 7. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. So the, the purpose of this, as you said, is to educate and bring to light some of these issues. So they will be chatting with seven professionals. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they'll be asking questions. These people will be responding. So there will be no, uh, they will not be doing any art or that, that sort of thing tonight. No. no. Okay. So let's walk me through that three-day workshop that you all had. What was the agenda for, for those three days? Um, well, it was basically to, um, to complete... Mm -hmm. you know, to complete a box. Um, but we kind of took them through, I mean, it's a long process. Okay. Um, you have to con conceptualize the idea. You have to figure out how you're um, visually, how you're going to express um, a thought, a feeling, you know, uh, you know an experience. Um, and we just kind of like helped them through that. So they chose a box first. Um, we had different shapes and sizes. And then, um, yeah, they, we had a whole um, different set of materials, and they kind of just went and picked what they thought, you know, they would use. Um, How difficult is it to get people like this, the survivors of, of domestic violence and abuse and that sort of thing, to really come forward and, you know, work alongside others? Ooh, yeah. Well, it, it was quite challenging. It was, yeah. it was challenging. Um, we try to pull from our network, like other therapists, to see if we could right. get referrals. Um, we also try to pull from people in our social networks who may know people who they knew may have had experiences. Um, but overall, I think a lot of people were quite stuck. You know, some, I think it had a lot to do with shame, and some people didn't really understand um, that they had been abused. So there were also those people who, although they may have had a lot of experiences, they, they couldn't frame it as abuse. Yeah, so they kind of thought that if you didn't have a bruise, then it wasn't abuse. Yeah. Um, but we did go through an interview process um, to screen candidates because um, we wanted to make sure that they were ready. They were ready for this. Because it takes really kind of like um, going into the experience and staying there for a while. Yeah. So if you're not emotionally ready, um, it could just be a huge trigger and, you know, you can just fall apart emotionally. How do you know when they are emotionally ready? Well, we had, we had a, um, you know, we came up with like some questions for them. And um, it was really based on how much they had processed and how, um, how much support they had. Um, because it was, I mean, that's that's a really big thing to have either um, to have that psychological support or family support, friend support. Um, so you know, they needed to have had that. And if you want to add, yeah, and I and I want to say also that although we did do the interviews and we selected people based on what we thought was their level of resilience, we also still found that people had a lot of difficulty through this process. So I don't know if you ever really know yeah. that somebody and so, is. Some people oh. thought, OK, that was like so long ago. It yes. was a different lifetime. I can do this. I'll be fine. And you know, they had a really difficult time yeah. you know, doing it. How do you all deal with people who you've worked with, and then they go back to the situation again? They go back to that, to the abuser, in a mm -hmm. sense. How do you work alongside people like that? I guess, well, you just have to 
you have, you have to support <laughs> yeah, them and where they them. are at the mm -hmm. time. Okay. So even if they even if they're living with the abuser or they keep going back to them, you just have to support that person and what they need, kind of like what they show up with that week. Wow. Um, yeah. How effective would you say this initiative has been so far? Oh, I think very yeah, effective. I think it's been, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it has raised a lot of awareness and it has created some dialogue which we wanted to do and um, it's been thought provoking for many people so I think it has been quite effective. I understand viewers were encouraged to respond to the survivors artwork and mm -hmm. to their own experiences as well mm -hmm. so you had members of the public come in it was like an exhibition. Right yes. yeah it's an exhibition yeah. and we have a certain area that's um, that's um, you, you can you can do your own art and and put it up. So we have different art materials, and you can collage, you can draw, mm -hmm. you can just write things, and you know people can can put it up in right. response to the work. So let's just recap a little. So you've had the workshop; it already mm -hmm. took place. Mm -hmm. so it was these are some of the the products of that. Mm -hmm. And what's on the agenda once again tonight? You have a, an event. Tonight we have mm -hmm. the panel discussion. Right. Where will it be held? At Medulla Art Gallery. Mm -hmm. It's um, 37 Fifth Street. What time will that take place? From 7 to 9. Mm -hmm. and members of the public, yes. Yes. you're mm -hmm. invited. Mm -hmm. You don't need to register and that no. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, upcoming events in the future, you'll have any plans that you're putting in place, future exhibitions perhaps? Um, we're not sure yet. Right. I mean, around this subject, we do hope that this is kind of like a springboard for right. other mm -hmm. things to happen. Okay. Um, but I think we're just going to get through this first. Yes. Sure. <laughs> is there a number to call for further information? Um, or a website, uh, Facebook. Well, there's a Facebook, Facebook page, Art Facebook, Therapy yes. Association. Art um, Therapy Association. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Tobago. Mm -hmm. On Facebook. Yes. yes. Wonderful. What are your closing comments? What do you have to say to those looking and listening on? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I hope people come to see the yes. show because it's, it's really strong. Um, yeah. And, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of work has gone into it. Um, so, yeah, I hope people can come and, and look at it. Okay, great. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. Uh, we've been chatting with art psychotherapist Kim Bryan and art therapist Sean McLean. Ladies, thank you once again for beautifying our set this morning. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Are we now taking to our local weather forecast?